Hello everyone and welcome back to another Copy Break Archaeology. I hope you are well and staying safe. Cheers. Now, just a quick video today because I need your help uh, with a question. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to, well, I'm, I'm being able to keep very busy during uh, this uh, period of, of, of lockdown. I hope you are too. I'm being kept very busy with my master's degree in uh, conservation. And uh, I am coming up to my dissertation. And part of my dissertation topic is looking at the idea of virtual galleries and virtual uh, display areas. And a question I've got for you are, what are your thoughts of virtual galleries and virtual exhibits? Um, I ask because something that is, that I'm considering for my dissertation is the idea that virtual galleries and virtual exhibits should start to replace the sort of um, certainly the long distance sort of touring exhibitions such as you know the recent Tutankhamun exhibition and exhibits like that. Now really there are sort of two major reasons for this. Partly is um, a conservation reason, you know, uh, a lot of work has to go into making exhibits like these safe for the objects, uh, you know, that goes from, you know, packing, transport, transit, you have to have specially designed packing crates, uh, you have to take into account the different environmental conditions these objects are going to be situated in. There's a whole load of information you've got to take into account. Um, and, you know, this these sort of exhibitions can be potentially quite damaging to a collection or to even a singular object if these are not given proper attention. Another uh, sort of uh, point I also want to make is that these can also generate very large carbon footprints. So as well as trying to preserve and conserve our objects, we should also be looking out for our environment, especially in a day and age where we are increasingly becoming aware of the impact we're having uh, on the planet and trying to make um, suitable adjustments to account for that. And of course, there are also other considerations to take into account. Um, the cost of such exhibitions are quite large. Again, going back to having to have transport, especially designed uh, cases to transport them, specially designed cases to display them, insurance, travel insurance, display and exhibition insurance, venue insurance, a whole load of different things need to be accounted for and paid for which can make these exhibitions very very expensive now i know what some of the things that you may say is that you know a virtual exhibit can never um give you you know you never make it can never give you that that feeling of seeing the objects in person and i think i do quite agree with you on that point, that there's something that virtual galleries and virtual exhibits can also give us. They allow us to recreate a lot more that would be more difficult to recreate in a physical exhibit. We can recreate some of the environments and some of the places e more easily in which these objects would have been made, used and eventually deposited. I say easy, obviously it will take some work, but we can, the technology is there and we can play with a lot of data which are surrounding these objects which would be difficult to display or not as easy to display as coherently in a standard exhibit, the environmental data um, and, the, and the other data reconstructions of, of places where these would have been used. It was also provides a different depth of learning, you know, you can engage more easily in different aspects of learning visual auditory and as technology progresses maybe the even kinesthetic 
as well. I mean, the, the, um, there have been fantastic recent examples, even in Tutankhamun exhibit I mentioned previously, they had a virtual gallery space. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see it myself, um, but I, I did I did look at the virtual sort of galleries and, and sort of 3D environments they made for that. And that is the kind of thing that we could achieve for these big, big exhibits. Another consideration I also want you to potentially think about is that some of these uh, recreated 3D environments will also potentially uh, allow objects which are potentially arguments about repatriating more easily repatriated to places where potentially they should be. Now, this isn't an argument or this is a discussion about repat repatriation, but it is a consideration that may be something we can think about with the development of these virtual exhibits and virtual spaces. So what is your view? What do you think of virtual museums and virtual galleries? Do you have any experiences of um, looking at virtual museums and galleries? I know I've been looking at the internet a lot, at sort of um, virtual galleries and virtual tours that various museums um, have and have been putting together, especially at this time where it's very difficult to access museum collections. And again, another point, you know, during these worldwide health, health pandemics, you know, it's very difficult for people to access collections and these virtual galleries, these virtual exhibits will also allow for that and it will allow for a greater audience even beyond, um, you know, the, the, the sort of lockdowns and restrictions that are currently being placed you know, people will be able to access it from other countries. Now, there are obviously lots of things you'd need to figure out, you know, how are these paid for? Do people have to pay? And it, But that's really not the main consideration here. What do you think about these sort of virtual galleries starting to replace these sort of wide traveling, big, um, exhibitions and sort of loan of objects as a way of helping conserve the objects and sort of um, helping reduce our environmental impact. And is there anything that in this video I haven't considered that you'd like to point out? Now if you don't want to if you don't want to comment on the in the comments below then feel free to head over to Facebook, find Coffee Break Archaeology on Facebook, just type in Coffee Break Archaeology or pop up. There, there'll be a post asking the same question pinned to the top of the page. Or if you don't want to leave this as a public comment, then you can either message uh, Coffee Break Archaeology um, and I'll respond to you there. Or you can e or you can send me an email in the email in this address in the description of this video. So please do let me know what you think. Um, I'm looking for, you know, all different sort of points of views, things I haven't considered or even opposing views to my own. Um, really just to try and flesh out this idea. I hope you're all staying safe and keeping well. And cheers.